In this video, this blank project is going to turn into my first professional Roblox game. Will I actually make something good or will it flop? Welcome back to the channel, Gamer. After 18 months of not making a video, I finally remembered my password. So join the Discord and let's game develop together, boys. So before this month started, I spent a week getting familiar with how everything works and I actually filmed it all. But to kick this one off, I started by playing Roblox with my friends, two teams and Jonathan to figure out what the game is going to be. You should meet Johnny. He will primarily be making the art for the game and I will handle most of the programming. He's actually the artist for my Steam game, Topple Tactics. We wanted something simple that's proven to do well. And what better option than a classic obby, one of the most popular genres on Roblox. However, there are quite literally tens of thousands of those. We needed a twist and therefore Shopping Carts Obby was born. Well, it's still a blank page, but it will be born. My first task is to create movement which feels amazing to play on. Jonathan made a little shopping cart which... Wait, how do I add a model into this thing? Apparently I'm blind because it was literally right here the entire time. The first thing I tried is making it into a Roblox vehicle and this just didn't do what I wanted it to. So I opted for a custom movement script. Little did I know I was about to open a rabbit hole of pain and suffering that would last two whole weeks. Don't worry, I'll just show you the fun parts. It's been a few minutes and I have this so far. Six and a half hours later. You do not know how happy I am to see this right now. Much, much later. Okay, this isn't perfect, but at least it works. Let's see if my friends agree. And I think it's important for the idea of like what a shopping cart is in stationary. Mm -hmm. Well, the front two are going to be your pivot points. Cart ascending into the heavens fixed. This is one of the times where Roblox doing stuff for you isn't helping, man. Cart doing this when I tried to make it move up a ramp. This one took three days and required me to watch university maths lectures. By the way, the video about this game is sponsored by this game. Go play it after this video. Link in description. It's the next day now. We found another six to seven bugs. And that's where I'm going to pause. This movement took me so long that literally half of my notes for this video are me just yapping about staying up late at night, thinking I'm done only to get another week long task list and it goes on. The whole process included developing an intensely strong hatred for this stupid slope, which would launch the cart like a slingshot across the map. Seriously, this slope. Say mean things to the slope in the comments below. I literally moved countries before this was finished, but we now have the legendary shopping cart movement script. Except the game is still literally non-existent. Since this is an obstacle course, we should probably make some obstacles, like this wrecking ball. Oh yeah, this is just what I wanted. After I got it swinging, the game gave me one last F.U. with the knockback script doing this. But at least it works now. We do have a problem, and it's that every time you die, you have to restart the entire game. We should probably make some checkpoints. I'd like to pause the flow of this video here, and what you're probably truly thinking right now is, Brian, this game is fucking ugly. And when will you make an actual obstacle course? The reason for this is because Jonathan was making the art all along. So now we have a pretty UI and lots of track assets, but no track. Yeah, this was quite boring. Jonathan was keeping me company by turning my ugly placeholder crap into something pretty to look at. I also started suffering from something I called obstacle complexity inflation. You see, each map has 100 obstacles, but 20 obstacles in, you just completely run out of ideas. So you just add more and more stuff to the obstacles in an effort to make them unique. As a result, of course, you get bored. So you put something not completely mind numbing on your second monitor, only to get completely engulfed by it and forget you were working altogether. Update, it's been about three to four days since I last checked in and I've done a hundred stages, which is nice, except we want to add two worlds to the game. So I've got a hundred more to go. Several long days later. We're finally done. But now that the core gameplay is pretty much done, it's time to do everything else, which actually takes way longer to do than the core gameplay. That's why the next morning I woke up and was suddenly in a sweet new ride. 
because we are adding cart upgrades. We have quite a few. My favorite is the racing cart, which is a bit too fast to be honest, but we're keeping it. The DJ cart is pretty cool too. It jumps really high. You can earn coins by just playing the game in a number of different ways, or you can use your money to speed up the process and help me pay my bills. As you may have noticed, we also have all of these buttons. They currently do nothing, which unfortunately for me means they need code to make them work. So the following days were spent locked in. Jonathan adding some art and helping out with the code, me coding, and we made a bunch of stuff like leaderboards, an AFK system, daily rewards, and time rewards until finally all of the buttons did something. We also added some other stuff like a gravity coil upgrade, which is a Roblox classic. Okay, so the overlord ChatGPT said I have to add it to the player's inventory, give it a handle and a bunch of other stuff. So if I launch it, we should see it on the player's hand. Yeah, that was never gonna happen, was it? Now that the game is looking pretty, it's quite obvious that one of the senses isn't being stimulated. That's why sound is next, and I'll let Jonathan demonstrate for you. So now when you roll around in your car, it sounds like a real shopping car. And we did a surprisingly good job at this. Also, when you go through checkpoints, you get scanned like groceries. And this is probably my favorite part of this entire game. And of course, it wouldn't be a Roblox game without this. Hang on, this is actually a great time to give you an example of game dev expectations versus reality. To add music, we make a sound object in game and play it when you launch. You think we're done, but what happens if the song finishes? Well, we have to make sure each song plays and they play in a nice loop. But what if the player doesn't want the music? Well, then we design a whole UI and make it open and close and then hook it up to a sound controller script we made, which changes a music volume value when you press the buttons. But now the volume resets every time they go on the game. Okay, no problem. So when I join, give the server a music volume value and every time it gets changed, tell the server to save. I left out about half of the steps there, by the way. As the game is now almost done, in typical fashion, it gives you a massive middle finger and starts breaking for no reason. Tutti's timer started at 300 minutes. The leaderboard scores stopped showing up. So I grabbed my gun, <coughs> keyboard, and joyfully worked until midnight on a Sunday to get all of this working, whilst the no copyright music was taunting me the entire time. Whilst I was suffering, Jonathan made some start and end assets for the levels, which really tied the game together. And the game is done. If you want to play it, click the link in the description for our first Roblox game. I think this turned out really good. I love game dev and I really missed all of this. I also love all of you, especially those that came back to watch after my 18th month upload break. So thank you for sticking around and I'll see you in the next one.